You want to talk about clueless. How about 49ers, DB? Jimmy Ward questioning if Matthew Stafford is going to be an upgrade over Jared Goff in L.A. Jimmy Ward, sans clue. What a planet delusional take and why, Jimmy Ward, would you poke the bear? I mean, and the comments itself, they were just so asinine. You know, wondering about Stafford and how bad the Lions have been and how come they didn't make the playoffs all these years. Stafford and I have the same amount of playoff wins. Zero. He's been in three playoff games, lost them all. But it's not Stafford's fault, if anyone has a clue. Matthew Stafford, fourth quarter comebacks, unbelievable arm. He's a superstar. And now he's with a real organization, with a real head coach, real general manager, real owner, weapons and depth around him, great offensive weapons, phenomenal defensive players, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey. I mean, the Lions organization, they've been rebuilding since 1957. Matthew Stafford was set up for failure. Anyone who thinks that any issue in Detroit was on Stafford, I mean, you're just simply put not paying attention. I can't wait. I mean, why would you poke the bear? I can't wait until Matthew Stafford shuts up Jimmy Ward to the tune of slicing and dicing the 49ers, which I acknowledge, well, Ward's a heck of a player. The defense for San Fran is tremendous. Bosa's coming back. But Kyle Shanahan was already on record on Peter Schrager's outstanding podcast, Flying Coach with Sean McVay, the Rams coach that Kyle Shanahan wanted Matthew Stafford. So there's already going to be hype and juice around that game anyway. Uh, Stafford's going to throw for 850 yards combined in the two games, two wins against San Francisco this year. I can't wait for that. Oh, by the way, he's going to be in the mix for MVP. Oh, by the way, the Rams are going to win the division. Oh, by the way, Matthew Stafford and the Rams are going to the Super Bowl. Still buzzing from the finish of a pivotal Game 5 of the NBA Finals. That was an absolute class. Drew Holiday with the steal of all steals. Pivoting the ball away from Devin Booker, who was looking to take the lead with under 30 seconds to go. Holiday aggressively pushes the ball up the court, heaves it for Giannis Antetokounmpo. Flying in the air for a wild and perfectly timed a thunderous alley-oop connection and one. My goodness, Holiday is just a terrific defensive guard. We've seen that forever. A two-way star. That's why Milwaukee made the trade. When Booker drove, of course I thought he was going to score. Why not? Devin Booker had 40 points yet again. Heck, I thought he was going to pull up for a 17-foot jumper. You factor everything in, the weight and the meaning of that steal. I mean, it's incredible when you think about it. Game five of the NBA Finals, series tied at two. Phoenix jumped down to a 16-point lead after one. Never in a million years I think that they would blow it. Milwaukee not only ties it with an insane second quarter, Bucks go up double digits in the fourth. Phoenix chips away. Booker had a chance. Holiday was Michael Jackson. He was a smooth criminal. Even when he struggled on offense, the defense has been remarkable this postseason. And the Bucks' big three came up huge on the road. Giannis Antetokounmpo continues to have a postseason for the ages. Chris Middleton simply on fire. Giannis Middleton, Holiday, became just the fifth trio in NBA Finals history to each record 25 points plus 50% shooting in a game. I mean, these numbers are off the charts. The feel is even better. They're the first to achieve that nugget since the combo of Worthy, Abdul-Jabbar, and Magic in 85. And they did it on the road in Game 5 of the NBA Finals. The Milwaukee Bucks have a Game 6 in Milwaukee, one game away from the Bucks' first title. And if they win it all, that holiday steal and alley-oop will be remembered as the sequence forever. Williams and the Suns choked. Credit the box, but the signature effort and discipline from Phoenix went up in flames. This team has been amazing and laser sharp on Armani Williams all year, especially at home. To kiss away a 16-point lead in the NBA Finals, it forgivable if they end up losing this series. Chris Paul foolishly fouling Giannis on the iconic alley-oop was just insane. I mean, this doesn't even play on the ball. 
I mean, that could have been called a flagrant. I mean, are you kidding me? How do you foul when it's only a three-point game with a chance to tie? Paul inexplicably fouls Giannis. Giannis misses the free throw. The back tap, as you see right there, for the offensive board. And then the ball game. That was it. The Suns three-point defense was deplorable all game. Suns got crushed on the offensive glass. Phoenix turned it over left and right. Credit the Bucks, But the Suns lost their way. Chris Paul remains a problem. You realize if the Suns lose this series, he's going to be part of four teams. Four teams that have blown a 2-0 lead in the postseason. That would be an NBA record. The Suns have been outworked, out in their last three games. There's nothing positive about quote-unquote making the NBA Finals this year. They're supposed to win it. Now, understand, I'm not giving up on Phoenix. I picked them, I'm not giving up. The Suns' body of work has been too great this year. But Game 5's ebb and flow was a shocker. And if Chris Paul and the Suns don't get focused and ready for Game 6, this series loss will stay with them forever. Gotta love Colin Morikawa. Are you kidding me? What he did this weekend at the Open was flat out historic. And you listen to him speak and watch him dominate at such a young age. You have to be beyond impressed with his genius and mentality. When I say historic, I mean, you could choose your nugget of domination on Morikawa's second major at such a young age. He won the Open on his first try. That's out of this world. Morikawa joins Tiger Woods as the only players to win the Open Championship and PGA Championship before turning 25. Just Morikawa and Tiger, think about that. Plus the Open history, he shot a 265 over four days. One stroke away from the Open record. Jordan Spieth was excellent, and I always root for Spieth to get back on top, but it was impossible not to pull for Colin. Golf is in such great shape and in such a great place with the amazing youth and depth in the sports. You want to talk about clueless? How about 49ers, DB? Jimmy Ward questioning if Matthew Stafford is going to be an upgrade over Jared Goff in L.A. Jimmy Ward, sans clue. What a planet delusional take and why, Jimmy Ward? Would you poke the bear? I mean, and the comments itself, they were just so asinine. You know, wondering about Stafford and how bad the Lions have been and how come they didn't make the playoffs all these years. Stafford and I have the same amount of playoff wins. Zero. He's been in three playoff games, lost them all. But it's not Stafford's fault, if anyone has a clue. Matthew Stafford, fourth quarter comebacks, unbelievable arm. He's a superstar. And now he's with a real organization, with a real head coach, real general manager, real owner, weapons and depth around him, great offensive weapons, phenomenal defensive players, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey. I mean, the Lions organization, they've been rebuilding since 1957. Matthew Stafford was set up for failure. Anyone who thinks that any issue in Detroit was on Stafford, I mean, you're just simply put, not paying attention. I can't wait. I mean, why would you poke the bear? I can't wait until Matthew Stafford shuts up Jimmy Ward to the tune of slicing and dicing the 49ers, which I acknowledge, well, Ward's a heck of a player. The defense for San Fran is tremendous. Bosa's coming back. But Kyle Shanahan was already on record on Peter Schrager's outstanding podcast, Flying Coach with Sean McVay, the Rams coach that Kyle Shanahan wanted Matthew Stafford. So there's already going to be hype and juice around that game anyway. Uh, Stafford's going to throw for 850 yards combined in the two games, two wins against San Francisco this year. I can't wait for that. Oh, by the way, he's going to be in the mix for MVP. Oh, by the way, the Rams are going to win the division. Oh, by the way, Matthew Stafford and the Rams are going to the Super Bowl. How about my New York Yankees? My New York Yankees. I don't even know who these guys were. They were able to take two out of three from the big man Boston Red Sox. Yankees have all these injuries. They've got six players on the COVID list, including Aaron Judge. And the Yankees bashed Boston. The Yankees going into this series. They were 0 for 6. Lost six straight games against Boston this season. Swept twice. You know, our producer, Malcolm Cohn Coleman, is a huge Red Sox fan, so he's been loving every second of it. So now we get to flash this for the series recap, and 
it makes me happy. Look, I'm not going to tell you the Yankees are back. I was thrilled the way Garrett Cole pitched on Saturday. Thrilled with the way that Garrett Can- Sanchez hit on Saturday. Thrilled with Mother Nature, who remains undefeated. I mean, the rain came down. Otherwise, Boston probably would have come back. I mean, that's just been the Yankee season all year. I mean, credit Mother Nature with the save. Retire her number. She earns the pinstripes. Give her credit. Yankees take two out of three. I'm thrilled. They're not back, but it's a step in the right direction. I was surprised by it based upon the players who are on the roster. I mean, I don't know who was in the batting order, so I'll take that from a Yankee perspective. they got to get this off my chest. What a wacky, weird, concerning, only the Mets kind of weekend for the New York Mets. I mean, first of all, Jacob DeGrom gets placed on the DL. That's not good. Francisco Lindor is going on the DL. That's not good. I mean, we need to protect Jacob DeGrom at all costs. Forearm tightness. And this thing's all weekend in Pittsburgh. Met by the lead and Edwin Diaz. A walk-off grand slam to the Pirates. That guy in the stands. That was our guy Vin from the Time to Shine crew. Mesmerized at his mess. He was off last week. He traveled to Pittsburgh. You couldn't believe it. I mean, the Nuggets on Saturday's loss to the lowly Pirates. You can't make that up if you try. Sunday, the Mets then gave up six runs in the first, which was crazy. Walker bats the ball away. A little dribbler up the line thinking it was foul. Instead, it was fair. Three run score. Mets are down 6-0. Way to come back and win. Michael Conforto with the home run in the ninth to take the lead. I mean, the Mets, man. Only the Mets. Got to get this off my chest. The Milwaukee Brewers are legit. Like, next level kind of legit. Like, it's not impossible that we could see a Bucks and a Brewers championship in the same year kind of legit. Corbin Burns absolutely dominated the Reds yesterday. The Brew Crew swept away Cincinnati. This is the same Reds team that beat the Brewers 3-4 last weekend. So this is definitely some sweet revenge. Brewers, hitting. They have power pitching. They have the best 1-2-3 in Major League Baseball. Look, I still favor the Dodgers and the Padres. You look at talent in the National League, but... The Brewers are legit. Great manager, phenomenal team, ton of confidence, a lot of swagger. They deserve to be included with the best of the best in baseball. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.